The cartoon effect can be found under the stylized category. And before I apply it to this video clip, I just wanna show you just how amazing of a video clip we're gonna be working with. Okay, so what we're going to do is apply this cartoon effect to the video clip. And what this effect attempts to do is stylize the image into a way where it looks kind of like it was sketched. And this is one of those effects that's just super cheesy. There are not a lot of use cases for it unless you are okay with the way that this effect actually looks. It's not going to magically make your footage look like it was hand drawn like an actual cartoon. But let's talk through how it actually works and what these controls do. And I'm getting all this from the After Effects help guide. If you just go to the help menu and then down to effect reference, you can find the stylized category and then the cartoon effect where I'm pulling all this information from. This effect basically works in three stages. First, it's going to try and smooth out the entire image to simplify it and to reduce the overall level of detail. Then it applies kind of a find edges effect, so it's able to find points of contrast, just like the find edges effect, and then basically add a stroke to those points of contrast. So it's trying to generate lines that look like they were drawn by hand. And then finally, it attempts to really smooth out all of those colors again, blocking out large areas of colors that are similar, kind of like this suit jacket and the dress shirt underneath to make it all look a lot smoother and flatter. So let's take a look at the controls and see how we can modify this a bit. I'll find a good frame to stop on maybe right here. And the first option is render, which is set to fill and edges by default, but we could change this to just fill and then it will remove all those strokes or just edges. And then we'll only see that find edges overlay. The point of these three views is one, if those are different looks that you're going for, but also to be able to isolate those two different passes, the fills separate from the strokes, basically. So I could change this to fill and then work on the settings to get those fills to look exactly the way that I want them to before applying the strokes and working on those edge controls. Now the fill options obviously directly apply to the fill pass of the final render, but detail radius and detail threshold apply to everything. So let me switch this back to fill and edges to start and show you what detail radius does. If I really crank it up to something high and zoom in here and especially look at this wall behind our dancer, I'll reset this back to its default and you see a lot more detail comes in. So the detail radius is basically how much this effect is allowed to smooth things out. The higher the radius, the more those colors are going to blend together. Next is the detail threshold. And if I crank this up, again, we're going to lose more detail in the overall image. And this is much more drastic. But it's basically determining what areas of the image are going to be allowed to be blurred together. So now this background wall is almost all one solid color, except for this grungy, grimy texture. And if I change this to just fill, we're gonna get rid of those lines as well. So you can really see how everything is being smoothed out. So the higher that detail threshold, the more these colors are going to blend together, but we're also going to lose a lot of detail in the facial features. So this is something that you kind of have to just dial in to get the look that you're after. Next up is shading steps. And this is basically like the posterize effect. If I turn shading smoothness all the way down to zero, then we're basically recreating the posterize effect. We're not really getting any smoothness between the different posterized values. And if I turn shading steps down to say four, then we're gonna have even fewer levels of posterization happening. But as soon as I start turning up that smoothness, then each one of those levels is going to start blending into each other a little bit more. And if I turn the shading steps up as well, we'll get a lot more detail. So I'm gonna set that back down to its default because I think that looks pretty good. And now that we're happy with the way that these fills look, we're gonna move on to the edge controls and I'll switch my render over to edges as well. Now, everything that we just did to the fills and the detail radius, detail threshold affects how these edges are being generated. The find edges pass is applied after the fill with the shading steps and shading smoothness. But now that we're here, I could change things like the threshold. If I turn this up, then we're going to have thicker lines. More of my image is going to be more likely to have a stroke applied with a higher threshold. If I turn that way down, then the lines will get much thinner and the less of the image will get that stroke applied. I'll set that back to its default. And next up is the width. So even if you've gotten the lines where you want them, but the thickness isn't quite where you want it, that's what the width is for. I could change that, be higher and make thicker, bolder strokes, or I could turn it way down and have a much thinner outline over the entire image. Crank that up a little bit and then turn up the softness a bit and you see that this just smooths out all of these lines, but it also makes it all a little bit blurred. So 60 is the default that generally works pretty well. If you wanna sharpen that up, you can just turn that down. 
And then finally we have opacity. So if you don't want 100% black outlines, you could dial that back a little bit to 50% or something like that, but I'm gonna leave it up at its default. All right, finally we have advanced controls. So let me switch this back to fill and edges. So we have our final render. And edge enhancement is a very subtle adjustment. If I turn this up, what's happening is that the fills and the edges are basically being shifted. So a positive value is going to bring those edges in towards the fills a little bit. And if I go in a negative direction, it's going to kind of push them out. So that's just a little fine tuned control that you can have for those edges. Let me reset that back to default. Then we have edge black level, which we'll be able to see easier if I switch this back to the edges mode. If I increase the value, it's going to expand those edges towards the center of the image basically, adding in more levels of gray. I could also push this in a negative direction and then it's going to basically eat away at those edges and make our lines a little bit thinner. I'll set that back down to zero. And finally we have edge contrast, which does exactly what it sounds like. If I turn the value up, it's going to add a lot more contrast to the lines. If I drag it down to a very low value, then it's actually gonna invert those edges. But again, you can use it to fine tune the look of your strokes. So I'll switch this back to fill and edges. And then let's say I wanna make it look a little bit more like a cartoon by dropping the frame rate to something much lower. So I'm just going to add another effect, posterize time, and put that before the cartoon effect, set it down to 12 frames per second, zoom in nice and close, and then maybe add a curves effect also before the cartoon effect, and just make everything a little bit more punchy, go into the cartoon effect and make the edges width a little bit thicker, and then maybe turn the shading steps down to say four, and then play this back. Now this does take quite a bit more time to render. This is not a fast to render effect, and anything on top of footage obviously has to process on every single frame, so I'll edit out this preview time and we'll just play it back. And there you have it. We've got our guy dancing down the stairs and it definitely has a look to it. Again, this is not going to magically turn your footage into something that looks like a cartoon. Maybe if you shot your subject on a green screen with a locked off camera so that you could then key out the background and really process that footage and place it into an actual cartoon background, you might be able to create some results that you're actually happy with. But just slapping this effect on top of footage is never going to make something that looks like it was actually drawn by hand. But regardless, that is what the cartoon effect does and that's everything you need to know about it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.